Money Watch now. Global markets are looking to recoup some of the losses last week after stocks declined following the president's positive coronavirus test. So we want to bring in Melissa Armo. Melissa, you are a the CEO and founder of The Stock Swoosh to help us break it down. So, Melissa, the U.S. stock market looks like it's rebounding. And this is following the president's diagnosis. You would think that the president being diagnosed with the coronavirus would inject some um, confusion and instability, all the sort of stuff that the stock market doesn't seem to like. But then something happened overnight where uh, stocks started to rally. What's going on? Well, actually, Friday, Friday night, the market fell a lot after the close once Trump was lifted off and went to the hospital. So we did have a sell off Friday night. But then there was no trading Saturday or Sunday. Then the futures opened up Sunday night and they were slightly up because we heard from Trump over the weekend. He did a few videos, put a few things on Twitter, uh, did a drive by from people out outside of the hospital. And he sounded sick, but he looked better than he initially did on Friday. People were concerned Friday they found out he had a fever. But a lot of the symptoms that he exhibited are the symptoms that many people have that have had COVID. And you got to look at it like this. Trump has been out a lot. I'm surprised, to be honest with you, that he didn't contract the virus before this, when you look at how much he's been out in front of the public and how many people he's been around. Hopefully, he will get better soon. Today, the markets are up. But I think there's a possibility we could still fall today. One of the things that's weighing heavily on the market is the fact that Congress can't seem to come together and agree to a stimulus plan. And that's very problematic for the markets. And let me ask you about this, Melissa. Unemployment fell again to 7.9 percent in September, according to the Labor Department. This marks the lowest since the pandemic. So what does that number tell us about the state of the economy? Well, the, well, the number has been going down, which is positive. So say you were doing a graph chart, it's slowly going down, down, down. That's good for the economy. But when you look at it overall, continuing claims every single week have been either over a million or around or over 800,000. Until we get those claims week by week down to 600, 500,000, 400,000. I don't think that the economy is out of the woods yet. Right now, for example, the, the airline industry, they're suffering tremendously, tons and tons of layoffs. And in fact, a friend of mine, she works for JetBlue, they told her she, she made it through this round of layoffs. She's good until the end of the year. Then they're talking about doing more layoffs. If Congress can't come to a deal to help some of these industries, uh, hospitality is another one, cruise lines is another one, uh, the airline industry, it's going to be very problematic. Remember, at the end of the year, a lot of people travel for the holidays. I don't I don't know how many people are going to be traveling this year, even around the holiday season. Hmm. So let's talk a little bit more about this potential stimulus deal, uh, $2.2 trillion. It looks like the conversations have started back up again. And it, it sort of looks like the stock market is reacting to that. Just the fact that they're willing to talk again is good news. But uh, they've been trying to hammer out a deal for months now, and nothing's happening. So what sort of in impact could a deal or no deal have on the market? My overall look in the market right now, whether a stimulus deal is passed or not is, we're about 28 days away from the election. So the election is going to impact the market. October is going to be volatile whether a stimulus deal gets passed or not. We may have a once-off where we have a big rally on the day. If a deal gets passed, that would be great. But I think you're going to see a very choppy October. In other words, for example, I wouldn't enter any strong, new, big, long positions during the month of October. You could see sideways trading, you could see selling. You may have a one-day rally when Trump gets out of the hospital or one-day rally if a stimulus plan passes. But until the election, I think the market's going to be choppy and I wouldn't aggressively get into any new long positions. If anything's going to happen, we're going to see selling. Volatility scares people and I think it's not over. And I don't think we're out of the woods until really a vaccine is out approved, available for people to take, or some kind of therapeutics. Right now, people are so afraid to go out and do things. And like here in New York, now de Blasio is talking about closing down nine more zip codes. It, this city is suffering so bad. And I know a lot of people are moving out to the suburbs. Real estate in the suburbs is rising, but people got to go out. People have to do stuff. People have to spend money. And when they're scared about getting this virus, which I understand, I totally understand it, it's problematic for the economy. And again, I, I love the fact that we're improving week over week, but you've got to get those numbers down. We need to see people back 
really working. It's great to, to stimulate the economy by helping out these people that are struggling. But ultimately, people need to work. People can't be living on unemployment forever. And if companies aren't hiring, then how can people go back to work? It's a great, it's a great question, uh, Melissa. And you know, we are also reporting uh, that movie theaters are suffering. Uh, some of them are closing. Um, we talked about the airline industry and the layoffs that are happening there. And I think your point is well taken that until there's a vaccine, until we have uh, flattened the curve on this pandemic the way some other countries have been able to do, um, we're not out of the woods yet. Uh, Melissa, as always, we appreciate your analysis. Thank you. Thanks for having me.